Hey everyone, this is Garage Time on location again. I'm here today with Efren Hi. and his Porsche behind us. We are at CNC Collision today and we're doing work on his car to seam weld it. Now, Efren has taken the welding workshop class at my place. Very helpful. Yeah, so that was a, like an eight hour session. We focused Solid mostly on TIG. And now um, Everett is seen welding his own car. I'm here yeah. helping with the planning, helping with some of the hard to reach areas. But we're getting a lot more experience today with the big welder and just going for it. He's doing a full seam weld. Uh, my car, it was mostly focused on the front and a little bit in the foot wells. His car, we're doing engine bay, interior cabin, we're doing like the whole thing. You're going left or right. I would go the other way if I was you. Okay. Yeah. Start. Start from me to you. There you go. Yep. Drag. 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 Perfect. So you don't really want to create a big puddle. You just want to create some heat. Right. That's it. You don't want to like melt anything. You're just burning it. Yeah, so you know what? You're getting too close to the yeah. um, to the edge, so yeah. keep the weld bead lower. Okay. Yeah, good. A little more distance. Your tungsten's really close. Yeah, yeah. And just one, two. That's a good distance right there. Go down towards the pan. There you go. Is that because I'm getting so close? So the tungsten and it flashes? What do you mean? When the it flashes, that means I'm getting too close to the, with the tungsten. Is your helmet flashing? Or? No, no, no. The, the slide is flashing. The weld is flashing. It, it could be that you're not all the way down on the pedal, or it's too far. It's too far? Okay. Yeah. That's perfect. I mean, that's nothing. I have to look at where the pedal's at. I didn't realize the pedal was a fish instead of it being like that. So. Oh, yeah. So when you push it, it doesn't Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, I got a little more out. And then we'll wire brush it and yes. uh, get the make. So I'm going to start at the top. Yeah, pull towards you. Pull towards me, yes. It's the wrong glove. I know. Oh, you don't have the right side? No. <laughs> yeah. Well, this one you can wear, but it has a hole in it. It has a hole? It has a hole right here. This is the left hand. Whatever is more comfortable. What's the left hole for? Is it a custom? The hole? No, it's just a hole. Oh. That's like probably 10 years old. Oh man. <laughs> Okay, so it's day two on this project, and we've, we've basically gone through most of the car now. Um, Efren's done a lot of these. These are basically his welds here. And how's it going? How, how, how do you think it's going? 
Man, I think it's actually going great. I mean, I definitely got a lot more confidence after I took your class. And, um, you know, even uh, cleaning this and going through the process that you mentioned helped a lot. Uh, you know, it was nervous doing the first couple of welds, but definitely with your guidance and, you know, uh, I got a little more detailed and I got a little better at, uh, at welding each piece here. Yeah, so, you know, the real difficult thing with seam welding is the contamination due to the parts. This is an old car. It was put together with factory primer, sometimes seam sealer. And what we're doing is we're, we're increasing the strength of the chassis by adding welds every inch. Now, we can't clean the metal between the two pieces that are sandwiched together. And when you weld that area, all the, the, the residue and the dust and the sand, all that comes out in the weld. So the steps that we're taking are just kind of like a three pronged approach, we're preheating it with the TIG welder. We're not melting any metal, we're not adding any metal, we're just heating it with the TIG welder. And that gets a lot of the stuff out. We're wearing respirators in addition to our regular masks. Very important to wear respirators during this. Yeah, it gets equipment. really smoky. It's a lot better in this shop here at CNC Collision versus at like my home workshop. The whole place was smoking up. I had to go outside. Here we got great ventilation, we're right by the bay door. But we heat up the joint to get most of the debris and um, residue out of it. Then we go over it with the MIG welder, and, and then we go over it with the TIG welder again if there's any porosity. Beginner or not, whether Efren did the welding or I did the welding, there's always something that needs to have either a little bit of porosity ground out, and then we typically go over that again with the TIG welder. It's a little bit of an advanced move for stage three, but Efren has been able to do uh, step one and step two, and then I'm coming in most times on step three just to tidy up the weld just a little bit, get the welds nice and flat, and really, really structural. So it definitely looks a lot nicer. I think this is gonna get a lot of structural rigidity. You know, I measured my car, it was about 18% improvement. This has gotta be more than that. Let's hope so. Yeah, because we'll count the welds, it's going to be in the two to three hundred range. I'm wow, pretty sure that many. Because look around. I mean, it's yeah, it's, it's quite a bit. all the way up into the A pillars. We've done some work on the roof area, where B the pillars, B pillars are, B pillars. the A, B, and C. We've done the foot wells, way up almost all the way into the dashboard areas. The welding that Efren's been able to do is as good or better than some of the factory welds in this car. Oh yeah, definitely. I'll take a picture <laughs> of some of the factory welds yeah. and. You know, I think they struggle with the same thing. It's hard to weld in the seams. So I'm really excited for you to be able to take this project from a class to oh, yeah. your own car and basically do an advanced technique. We've also been checking periodically on the select bench whether or not the chassis moved at all. And so far, we haven't been able to detect any real strong movement. I mean, the chassis bolted down at the pinch welds it's bolted down at the rear torsion tubes, and it's also connected in all the suspension pickup points. Yeah. So it's 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 really difficult for it to move, but periodically we're able with the select bench to check the pressure on the pins and check the pressure on the bolts, and we feel like there hasn't been any distortion yet. So we're doing some more work here on the front. That's probably the most critical area, but so far we're really pleased with the select bench and this, just the, the structure of the car is really remaining really really nice and true. Oh yeah, so this is awesome. Yeah, I appreciate your help very much, thank you. Yep. And I mean, these are very acceptable. I'm actually very happy with the way they look. Um, you know, Some are better than others. Yeah, like this one it. is great. Uh, some of them, you know, it starts to eat into the top piece Ooh. because it's, 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 um, it's just vulnerable or it's right. thin or it's, you know, it's it's got contamination, or you're you're getting into the other spot weld that's already there. Right. It's super hard. Well, I'm happy. I'm really happy. Yeah, clean metal is certainly really important. This with makes tape. me happy. Seeing that, because yeah. I know that was open. Yeah. That was just, and that's up, up here. That's that's it. There's nothing else. Like, that's really that's thick it. metal too, right there. That's yeah. Thick. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Okay. All right. So let's go from there. So let's get the front done. Okay, and we'll do that later, right? Yeah. yeah, I think we should focus on the front okay. just because it's that's not going to move, you know? Okay.
Okay, it's uh, three days, and we're, I think, done seam welding as much as we are going to be done. So Efren, he counted the number of welds we put in his car. How much is it? So originally we had uh, 42 in the back of the engine bay. We had... Uh, and the engine bay is not done. No, 100 and, I believe 167. I'm sorry, 177 inside of the, the cabin of the car. And then we had 300 and about 70 or so, so 350 <laughs> in the front of the uh, trunk of the car. Yeah, so when I said we were done, we are done except for the, the parcel shelf. There was some debate whether the shelf was gonna remain in or out, but I think it's gonna stay in. So there's probably a little bit more welding to do in the engine bay. That's another. I mean, just today we 20. added what, like maybe like 40 more welds, 50 more yeah, welds? Yeah, we added more. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's like, you know, 650 at the very least, 700 of well, uh, spot um, welds. <laughs> yes. Stitch welds, seam welds, welds, whatever you want to call them. Um, so tell us just from a beginner point of view, like what what do you think of the project? Uh, I think it's uh, a very fun project to begin with. Uh, it's something that uh, as a learning experience and it's something that I definitely have always wanted to do but was, was intimidated. There was very little knowledge at all anywhere on the internet that showed you a roadmap uh, on how to do something like this. And uh, you know, watching your video uh, made it a little more uh, comfortable to do. Taking the class made it, you know, took away some of that uh, initial, what would I say? Is that, you know, Just nervousness. Nervousness, or, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, one thing that Efren was concerned about is being electrocuted. Oh yeah, that's you know? true. And, um, probably you got electrocuted at some point, not, didn't not, not on this, but uh, that, that does, it can happen with the TIG welder. Talked about that, you know, where to hold the filler rod and how to avoid getting shocked and so forth. And, you know, eventually you see those, those concerns and then you see them just go away. Oh yeah. A lot of times welds didn't turn out great. No, we had to go back several times on a couple of them and you know, it was definitely, oh, another thing is uh, dirtiness of the car. There was some times where it was so dirty, even though we cleaned and we did everything we could to, you know, clean the area, it was still dirty and it would, you know, spat out. And just by pure coincidence, I was welding at that moment. And, you know, that brought my confidence down, but I knew it wasn't me, it was the car. So in the future, I'll probably try other techniques to, to clean the car. I was yeah. thinking about maybe doing a test of, with an acid of some sort and seeing what that does to, when I you do, you know, seam welding and, uh, but yeah, right. definitely learning experience on that. Yeah, it's not an, it's not like brand new metal. No. Um, because anytime it was acting weird, we would just pull out a piece of metal and do a test. And sure enough, the welds came out great. Um, but welding on a car is just different. I mean, we had some really difficult positions right. climbing around in the back of this thing. Luckily, it's stripped out, but um, it's, it's not an easy project, so. Yeah, you can't stop and go. I mean, you really have to commit to it. You have to know what your end goal is. You have to have a plan. You have to have everything pre-marked, everything pre-cleaned. And it's a, it's it's probably like 10 steps before you actually get to the welding portion of it. Yep. Uh, maybe not 10, but you know, a few less. But still, it's it's a it's a daunting it's, task to, yeah. to do this. You had the car stripped out and then you painted it so it didn't rust, yeah. which mm -hmm. you gotta do. Yeah. And then we ended up having to well, the, 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 the material that was used to paint it was like a, it was called steel it. Yes. Supposed to be weld through, but we didn't have good luck with it. At least I didn't think it was worth trying to burn through the steel it every time. Right. Uh, it's smoky. It's not really great smoky, to breathe. Yeah. And I just made the weld ugly. So we ended up having to wire wheel a lot of the seam again, which is, you know, like you say, it's planning, it's additional work, it's rework. And then after we seam welded it, Efren went back and added more of the steel aid just to prevent, prevent yes. it from rusting. So yeah, I didn't want the thing to flash rust, and yep. especially I didn't want the the slag or just any of that those old chemicals that came out of the the MIG and TIG weld to stay on the body for too long. So I, we immediately cleaned them with a wire wheel and sprayed them with the steel aid coating. And uh, yeah, I mean they they it blended in really well, and uh, I yeah, didn't have any. Did flash flush, uh, flash rust happening. So yeah, that was definitely a plus for us right there. And I think long term, I mean, job's not done. So no, I mean, I not. would recommend inspecting all those hidden cavities because that's one of the drawbacks to seam welding or stitch welding is that 
you upset all the coating on the internal cavity. Oh yeah. So you're gonna need to go and monitor that. Um, and I think you have plans to try to coat the inside of the cavity too, right? Yeah, my plan right now, I was talking to uh, Nathan here at CNC Collision, yep. was that uh, we're gonna get like some sort of a, a pipe. It's like a uh, wand. Yeah, like a wand that bends yep. around and go inside the car and spray with uh, the steel it or uh, another epoxy coating. Yep. And then afterwards, uh, for the whole entire car, I plan to use uh, a 3M wax, uh, cavity wax that they sell. And every single cavity that gets to a car, I'll go ahead and you know spray a wax and pull it out. And as yep. I pull, it lines the whole thing. And every two years or three years, whatever the can says, you're supposed to reapply again and again to prevent. So that is another thing that's been in the back of my head that I haven't been able to stop thinking about yep. is that, did we get the back of the of the well that you know and there's no rust collecting there and there's nothing that's gonna you know down the, li the line cause a hole from the inside to rust out so you know immediately you want to attack it and don't let it sit for too long i mean you know the sooner you do it and, and clear it and cover it the better you know yeah. versus and letting it sit that's what i'm saying like ongoing maintenance um, I, I recommend a, like going in with a boroscope oh yeah boroscope. And being yeah, able to visualize what's happening inside and also, you said you were gonna put it back on the rotisserie too, right? Yes, it's going back on the rotisserie again. So you might consider doing the steel it at multiple angles. Oh, of course, yeah. So that'll help coat the entire cavity where you can't do it when it's on its wheels. Right. I mean, another issue that we had was uh, sand. Even when yeah. we were welding, sand, there was still sand coming out. I spot blasted this car in certain areas to get yeah. a little surface rust. And um, I, the sand still came, came, it came out while we were welding, as yeah. a matter of fact. And I had to keep blowing and blowing it. I think most of it's gone now, but there's still some in there. And as I go yep. in the rotisserie, I'll find more. And you know. And the camera will show you if you need to get the more boroscope. In there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Good. Um, all right. So, what would you recommend um, someone else? Should they seam weld or not seam weld? Uh, until I actually put the car on the road and really drive yeah. it and notice a difference uh you know it's something uh, of a labor of love it's something that you not everybody needs this car is a, a 912 e uh, one year only car it has a, a volkswagen basically a 914 2.0 engine it's not a, a 3.8 4.0 car those cars will definitely need some some major seam welding this car i did it so in case i wanted to one day upgrade the engine or i just wanted to you know take the car to its maximum limit at the track and know that it wasn't the car flexing that was uh, causing me to drive a little less. And I just want the car to, you know, for tuning for purposes, to know that the car is the best that it can be. So if that's something you're after, you know, maybe you want to start from the bottom, take a class, do take all the steps that I took, which were, you know, the, the, the wire wheeling, the, the, the primer, the blowing air in them, the checking them with the boroscope, uh, all that, so it's, a, it's not a, a, as simple as it seems. It's definitely a, a big labor, and if you have a shop do it, I can't imagine that a job like this would cost less than ten thousand dollars. Right. I mean, seriously, like uh, it, it's no time. joke. Well, that's the, yeah. The Celeb is at least yeah. two thousand dollars just to any shop that's gonna rent, you know put a car in a Celeb. It takes a full day just to lay it, to put it on there. You got to rent the table, you got to rent the fixtures, yep. and set it all up and remove those fixtures and put them back in as you're welding to inspect them. That's another thing we had to do. Yeah, there was a lot of grief, or I, I guess I say, um, you know, questions about, is the car distorting? So that was something that was a big concern for you. And there was at one point, you know, Domenico, yeah. our, our metal guy that was helping us, Domenico, he went in there and it would hammer in. It was mostly in the front of the trunk of the car where I noticed that, you yeah. know, some movement. So we had to hammer it back and forth. and. It wasn't much, it was very, very minimal. I doubt anybody would really notice a difference. It wasn't like it warped like this or anything like that. It was very, very minimal. And we did skip around. We were trying to manage very the Very important. Uh, and and uh, just controlling where we were placing our weight when we were welding and then that kind of thing was, was important. So I think you came out with a great car. I mean, it's not, yeah. you, you're comfortable that it's not worse. It's not twisted. In fact, it's better than it was when we first put it on the bench. Yeah, well, another thing I want to do, I'd love to do, is do what you did on your on your video where you had the pipe and you bend the car. Yeah. And I would, love, I would even love to use your same tools I just have, so we yes. can see with, the, with your tools how much of a difference it is. Because obviously when you use different tools, maybe they're calibrated a little they're, differently. Yeah, but everyone's method's different. Everyone's method's different. But I would, I would be curious to really have a follow-up later and 
check you know how strong it is compared to uh, right. other methods that other people have done. But this is very, very, very detailed, and there's no other seam welds that I see that the car would need. I did literally everything, maybe Everywhere. overkill to be honest, and I'm still not done to be honest. But uh, that that will come with time. And we did have some oopsies, you know, like oh, yeah. we had we we did put some holes in the car. Oh yeah, but. Uh, like I told Efren, like don't don't worry because everything's fixable. Um, some of the welds that were porous, some of the stuff that didn't work because it had contamination. I think you were surprised at how easy it is to oh, yeah. go over it and, and fix it. Yeah, it was horrific looking at some of these welds that I made because they were you know the, the area we we're working on was pretty dirty. Yeah. And then Tom came in with the grinder, two seconds cleaned it, and then came in with the rod and the and the TIG. And all of a sudden, we had this gorgeous dime-looking thing, you know, which I'm not after dimes. The factory, yeah. if anything, I'm more after the factory look. Where the fa yeah. If you look at a factory RSR, if you look at any car that has seam welding from the factory Porsche race teams, the stuff looks like pigeon welding. Yep. I mean, the, the, it's really ugly looking. So anytime the guys are doing like a, a concours show, if there's dimes on there, yeah. that's a point against the car. Absolutely. Whereas if it's a little you know, jumpy or dirty, that's more in line yeah. with the factory. I want the car to look as, you know, factory as possible. It's a nice excuse to say, hey, it doesn't have dimes because it's factory, you know, but. Yeah, and I wouldn't recommend TIG welding the entire car. Like, it's way too slow to do 700 welds. But we did use the TIG welder only in cases that were, like, ugly, contaminated. Yeah. We ground it, we filled it. It was a little bit easier to duplicate that factory look with the TIG welder because it's got so much control, so much precision. So that's that's what we ended up doing. But the the, the, the confidence of, of at least me being here, Efren was like, oh no. And I'm like, don't worry. Yeah. And then we would go back and forth and I'm like, see, look, it's fixed. And you'd be like, oh, well, let's keep going. Yeah. <laughs> I think that is the exciting part of this project is that Efren has come a really long way in a short well. period of time and we, we got it done. It's one thing to understand the welding process, and another just to dive in and just do it and forget about the nervousness right, of it. Right. And and I think that's something that is helpful to have a mentor where you can just get some advice, hey, do this, do that, and next thing you know you're you know, three days later and you got like like you say, yeah. ten thousand dollars worth of work is now uh, at a huge fraction. But I, I can yeah. only imagine that if I just keep welding and keep welding how much better I'll get. And you know, that's that's the whole thing. Just keep practicing. Uh, have the right tools and um, you know the right attitude and yep. stay positive and you'll get where you want to be right so when you practice on clean steel how easy that is that oh, going to be it makes me feel like i'm a master welder when yeah. i go to the clean steel yeah. the car definitely the dirty weld definitely makes me feel a little uneasy and uh, yep but when i go like i said you said go back to the steel the clean steel you know it's not you you know it's the car and you definitely want to clean as much as the more time you spend cleaning the less work you'll have after grinding and, t and having to go back there with a the TIG and you know a rod to clean up you'll have less work the more time you take cleaning the car prior to you know any welding right and some of the more difficult areas that I tackled I was explaining to Efren like this pulsing technique oh yes where I as soon as the weld this is on the MIG welder as soon as the weld would start to pop back I would let off the trigger and I would let the heat soak into the weld and expel anything that was causing that contamination and then i would pulse it again go a quarter of an inch and i was doing this on off on off and like efren's was 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 watching me and he's like well why is it not doing that for me and i'm like well we're giving it time to 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 you're listening to the car the car is telling you like hey i'm not i'm not ready yet let those contaminants leave go ahead and hit it again with more more heat and that's, that was a kind of advanced technique that I was right. showing Efren and he was like, well, that, that looks good. Right. <laughs> so it's, you know, there's certainly, you know, more you can keep doing, doing, doing. And I will, and I will. And I'll yeah. definitely, I, I'm sure there's an, a, another level of class that I can take with you still that I'm yeah. sure is not, a, you know, will add to my uh, welding repertoire there. But uh, yeah, I'm definitely very, very happy about uh, the lessons and at the same time, very happy with, uh, with the end result. It, it's not a, a time, well, but I don't. That's not the look that I'm going after, and that's not the look I would want on my car if somebody else came and did it. Um, you know, I would probably wouldn't be happy with that. Yeah, it's gonna look great when it's painted, 
I know you guys are going to do a great job here at CNC Collision. Yes. Like this is going to be a fantastic build. So oh, yeah. definitely uh, check back. Uh, what's your Instagram? Uh, it's Efren Porsche. Efren Porsche. Yeah. So check in with Efren. He's got a lot of great videos on his Instagram feed. So you'll see all kinds of time lapse with us crawling around the car. It's fantastic. So right. thanks again for watching. See you soon.